Hi guys, I'm Kevin Evangelista. Welcome to my channel. And today we've got something very, very special and very, very massive. So massive, in fact, that it had to come in multiple boxes. But before we continue with the video, let's keep the lights on here in the studio. This video is brought to you by Sneak Attack Design Lab. They're a clothing company that specializes in technical fashion, more commonly known as techwear. And you can see me in their clothes in most of my videos. I've been supporting their brand ever since I met them back in 2019, and now they're returning the favor. Head on over to this link, you can find it in the description as well, to get 10% off your order from their site. Check their clothes out, you're bound to see something badass over there that'll look great on you. Thank you very much to Sneak Attack for this exclusive promo for my viewers. Now, back to the video. This is a bit unexpected here in my channel because, you know, usually I tackle like uh, budget keyboards. The least budget minded keyboard that I've actually covered before was the ROG Azoth. My review of the Azoth is still coming, by the way. I just have, don't have time to edit it, but I've shot it. All right, this is the Mountain Everest Max RGB gaming keyboard. It's a mechanical keyboard and it's got some pretty interesting modular features. But for now, we're gonna put the module boxes here at the side and we're going to look at the main box first. I have a bit of a trick for today. Ta-da, look at that new, new B camera angle. I bought a new mount for it. So the B cam is no longer here at my back. It's now at the top view angle, but yeah take a gander at that Bcam. So yeah, before anything else, I would just like to say that I am coming to this unboxing way, way blind. Usually my laptop unboxing reviews are kind of like a bit staged uh, because I have to prep the laptop right before I unbox it. So I have to get uh, OBS installed and I have to get a game installed, but that's it. I try to save everything for the unboxing. But this one is just me going in blind. So yeah, this is going to be as exploratory to me as it is to you guys. So yeah, uh, as we, as you can see by the sticker here, this is a demo unit. I am not going to be keeping this keyboard. I am going to be returning it. I am still going to be taking my time to enjoy this keyboard. So yeah, if we take a look at the back, it says here, easy connectivity. USB 3.2 Gen 1 Type A hub for your other peripherals and USB Type C for Everest. Okay. Unique media dock with display dial. Hmm. Okay. It has a dial and it's a circular dial. Four individually customizable display keys. Oh, it's kind of like a, what do you call that? A uh, Delgato Stream Deck. Two brushed aluminum face plates. Okay. Perky individual RGB lighting, base camp software. MX Cherries, okay, that's something that I haven't seen in a while because I've been unboxing uh, cheap keyboards and uh, the ROG keyboard that wasn't cheap didn't actually come with MX Cherry switches. I know that this keyboard kind of already made the rounds with like inter international media before. Back then, I don't think this keyboard was available in the Philippines. So this is the first time I'm seeing this locally. So now it's my turn to try them out. So. All right, bit of a bit of reading time here at the box. Innovation, aesthetics, customization, and performance. Okay, that's from the Mountain Design Mission. Okay, all right. Here at the top, we can immediately see the keyboard. Let's take the keyboard out. And actually, let's just leave the plastic here. Okay, immediately the keyboard. Okay, and we have the wrist rest. Okay. Oh, that's a pretty nice feeling wrist rest. Okay. Then we have a little drawer here at the bottom. The drawer here at the bottom, we can see that it has, we can see that it has a media dock, the USB cable, the numpad, and a customization box. Okay. Let's tackle these one by one. This is the media dock. Let's take it out. There's a bit of an... There's a bit of an assembly aspect to this keyboard, isn't it? There's this annoying droning sound inside of my condo in the hallway. It's really messing up the vibe for tonight. But yeah, this is the media dock. So we have a back, a forward, play pause, a mute button, and uh, what is this? I don't know what what button is this. Right in the one right beside. Oh, it's a dial too. Okay. All right, and it looks to have some uh, 
what do you call this status indicator lights status indicator leds oh and it connects via usb-c all right okay okay type a to type c and usb type c to type c so we're expecting two cables inside this uh also if you are noticing that this box is kind of like beat up already uh this is a media unit this is a demo unit so it has passed through some hands before and some hands are gentler than others so we have here a USB-C uh, male to USB-C female. So it's kind of like an extension thing. Okay. Uh, and this one is a USB, uh, a USB-A to USB-C cable. It's, it's very sturdy. It's very thick, very, uh, what do you call this? Uh, very poseable and it's braided. So yeah. Uh, do remember that uh, this is a wired keyboard. It is not a wireless, which is what I usually tackle here on my channel. Uh, we have a numpad. Okay. This is not the first time we've tackled like a removable numpad before. In my channel, we've covered the Claymore, the Claymore 2 and the Claymore 3 from ROG, which has a, a removable numpad area. So this is not anything new, but... I still maintain that it is something nice to see with higher end keyboards that you have like a consideration for a numpad. If not having a numpad outright, I don't, I really don't mind like large keyboards because I'm a huge person and I actually use the numpad on my laptops and my PC because, you know, I generally do a lot of editing. Uh, removing the numpad is not so much of a requirement for me. So yeah, as we can see, the numpad is just a standard numpad, a full-size, full-key numpad, and it has four, uh, what do you call this, like Elgato Steam, Elgato Stream Deck buttons here at the top. So I assume that these are also like little displays that you can customize the icons on. Okay, and lastly, we have the Customize box. I am enjoying this like top-down view very much. Uh, I used to want one of these. Whoa, what is happening? I used to want one of these like top down cameras for a long time uh, because that was the setup that I was used to back in Brentford TV, but it wasn't really viable uh, here in my condo until I figured out how to do it. <laughs> anyway, we have the uh, keycap and switch puller here. We have these magnetic pucks. I think these are the magnetic feet that that we read about in the the back of the box. And they are super strong. They kind of ruined the packaging because they're uh, they're kind of like facing you know, each other, tracking each other. But yeah, this is like a like a solid. Oh, that's a that's a really strong magnet. From here, it's yeah. From here, they, they're they already kind of pulling on each other. How strong these magnets are. Wow. All right. We have an extra escape key. Oh, this is the escape key. And I think this is the mountain, uh, mountain key cap one. Then we have a Cherry MX Blue, a Cherry MX Red, a Cherry, M a Cherry MX Speed Silver, a Cherry MX Brown. And what is this? It's kind of like a salmon. It's kind of, oh, it's the speed red. Uh, it's the speed red switch. The salmon color. But yeah, uh, this keyboard has Cherry MX Reds uh, stock on it. So we're not gonna be taking out these extra switches. We're not gonna be putting those extra switches there because, you know, we're not gonna be customi customizing this keyboard right now. Yeah. Uh, and we have the manual here at the bottom of the customized box. I don't need to read the manual. I am a man. I do not read manuals. I ignore them. <laughs> no joking. Every once in a while, you have to read the manual. All right, let's put the drawer back on. And let's see what we have. Okay, we have the numpad here. We have the magnetic feet. We have uh, the keycap and switch puller we have an escape key we have the cables we have the keyboard itself 
have the wrist rest. How do you connect? Oh, it connects magnetically. The wrist rest connects magnetically and the, uh, what do you call this? The dial, I know, the, the control dial. Oh, it just snaps in. It also has magnets on it. That's pretty amazing. Uh, one thing I saw earlier on the box was you can actually move it to another side. Is that true? Can I move it to this side? Is there like a connector here? Oh, you can move it. What about here? Can I connect it? Can I connect it to this side? Oh, no, this is a male to male. All right, that... That was pretty surprising for me. I did not, I did not expect that. But yeah, you can connect it on either the left side or the right side. Let's have it on the left side for now, because I feel that's a bit more ergonomic. It's a bit more ergonomic for me. You might think that, okay, it is kind of aesthetic to have it on the right side, like here at the corner, but if you kind of think about it, you operate the mouse with your right hand and you operate the keyboard with your left hand. So you can easily like reach over here and press buttons without interrupting or without taking your hand off the mousing hand. So yeah, this is the Everest Max. Typing feels good. It is a red switch. So Cherry MX Red, it's not surprising that it feels good. I like Cherry MX Reds. Then what do you call this? The the numpad kind of like connects to the side. Is it? How do you connect this thing? Oh, it has kind of like a like a switch or slide kind of thing here, where you can slide it to where you want it to connect. That is pretty badass. All right, let's connect it here to this side. Oh, it also has like a, a very, very light magnet to it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. All right, pretty ballin. I like it, I like it. I'll probably transfer it to the other side because that's kind of like fur for my mousing hand. Connection is a bit wobbly, but it's okay. It is an additional numpad. That's also what I said about the Claymore 2 and the Claymore 3 for me as ROG. Wow, okay. This feels really good. And the numpad is right here. I don't know why like full-size gaming keyboards still prefer to have the numpad over here. You can easily have it here. If you're a gaming keyboard, if you're making a gaming keyboard and you have to have like you have to have the consideration of having like a mousing hand over here, just move like like physically move the, the numpad over here to the left side, it's fine. And I'm not talking about like having like a removable keyboard that you can move to the left side. Just physically move it. Just make it so that the numpad is here. So I can operate the numpad like this and have and just come back to like my regular WASP configuration or WASP uh, position. That's not so bad. Uh, one thing I'd like to explore are these magnetic feet. So I'll probably just remove this. Oh, okay. So we already have some magnetic feet at the bottom and they are super strong. I kind of... Yeah, they're super strong. Look at that. Look how far... Look how far the magnets affect each other. Look. At this point, I can already feel, I can already kind of like pull the other foot. No, 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 That is, that is a really strong magnet. But anyway, I assume that this works by like, allowing you to do this. So I think only two per, per feet. I am assuming that this one also has those feet. Yeah, you're given eight of these, so I am assuming that you, that the maximum height is like two of these spacers and the foot. Uh, all right, that seems to be like a comfortable typing height. I don't think if you put all four of them in just like two feet, you're going to have like a good 
typing time because you're gonna have you're gonna be like this you're gonna be like a dinosaur before anything else it's probably a good idea to like plug it in let's plug this keyboard in all right plugging the keyboard in and i have a question uh i'm seeing that there are holes here at the back before we get into it uh this is pretty amazing having all of these like routing holes to here so this is probably the main like control uh port so that's where you plug this in uh but i'm also seeing another usb-c here can i can i plug the usb-c here and the keyboard will work and also there is a usb-a port right here and i'm thinking this is the pass through so if you want to connect your mouse here you definitely can and yeah all of these like routings channels for cables these are pretty good okay so what if i plug the usb-c here will it light up no it doesn't light up no it's an out it's a usb out so we're gonna have to plug the usb-c here then route the cable here all right look at that a little bit of a startup animation okay then let's plug in our numpad oh look at that steam dota 2 instagram and facebook uh i do not have dota 2 i do not play dota 2 well also the mountain uh the mountain uh what you call this logo here at the dial lit up okay all right this is pretty interesting it's already pretty interesting but before we start like finagling with everything i want to see the attachments the extra attachments so yeah this one this is the display pad so with 12 customizable display keys on a stylish aluminum frame okay let's see what it's all about reach your summit mountain okay all right this is the stand for it it's a pretty hefty stand it's very heavy it has a bit of a peel here very satisfying peel and this is a very i think this is a very grippy kind of thing yeah i can move my table with how grippy this is okay then we get the usb c uh usb a to usb c cable then we have the display pad itself it it's black okay uh, I don't know. Oh, so it's a separate kind of thing that you can't plug in directly to the... Uh, I thought it was kind of like this, where it's kind of modular that you can just slap it on your keyboard and it'll work. Yeah, nothing else in the box. It's basically a stream deck. So if you're assembling it like this, you can mount it to it. You can mount it to its stand like this and it's kind of like a friction fit. It's not uh it's not a magnetic fit and then you can plug it in like this so we have a usb c cable going into the device then we have since we have a pass through here we're going to be using that pass through to connect this one like so oh look at that it works this stand is very hefty and very heavy okay so we're gonna have to like customize this later don't worry this is just an unboxing video we're going to explore this in a full review soon it it looks like it needs the base camp software to actually fully function so yeah we're gonna wait for that one in the full review in the meantime we also have this a macro pad so this one I'm fairly familiar with, with macro pads, because I have used, uh, I have personally used uh, keyboards with macro pads before. So inside is this is similar, I would assume. And we have like one of those like super strong like stands again. We have the macro pad itself. Yeah, macro buttons. Gotta love it. Gotta love macro buttons. I'm an editor, so I use a lot of macro buttons. And we have a USB-A 
Nike USB-C cable. Uh, I am kind of like disappointed that you can't like tack this on directly to the keyboard and and connect it via those USB kind of things. I mean, you can tack this on like this right here because it has the rails. If you would look closely, there's kind of like a rail system here. And there's kind of like a rail system on the thing. It's kind of like a rail system here. But yeah, there's no there's no way to actually connect it without using like kind of like a USB uh, USB thing, USB connector. So yeah, you're still going to have to use the USB-C cable to use these additional modules. But this is pretty nice. I like how it's raised. It's it feels very sturdy. It's not gonna be slip and sliding all over your table. Uh, it is a mechanical switch, but is it like a removable? Let's see. Oh, it's a hot swap board. Even the macro. What is this? Why is this blue? It's a mountain branded switch. It's a blue. It's a it's a blue switch, but it's not clicky. It's a linear switch. Uh, but yeah. It, even this one is a hot swap board. That's pretty cool. That's a pretty cool uh, feature. Mountain Everest. Mountain Everest Max. This is a pretty solid keyboard. I mean, uh, the build is pretty nice. Uh, the numpad connection is a bit floppy, but I can kind of like forgive that. Keys are okay. I mean, it's not like the usual like cheap keyboards that I cover that are also kind of like uh aimed towards the hobbyists this is for people <laughs> i would assume that this is expensive i haven't even checked i'm i'm going into this video so blind that i haven't even checked the price on this i'm just put it somewhere here put somewhere here this is for like people who want a full like gaming keyboard experience and that's it they don't want to mess around with uh, building their own keyboard or modifying and uh, 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 modifying like a bare bones kit or something like that. They just want to buy and they've got money to spend and they just want to buy a complete gaming keyboard experience. So yeah, probably the last part of this video is to check out how it types. Just so you can reference the sound on something else. This is how my RK61 with uh, Kiki Kikan white V3s sound like. It's very thoughty. This is my best feeling in this sounding keyboard yet. It is a sleeper one, so it looks very ugly, and I want it to look very ugly. And I want it to look like a sleeper keyboard because it is a sleeper keyboard. Uh, this one is the Mountain Everest Max. That was a pretty good experience. <laughs> the keyboard felt great and it sounded okay. It's not like super great. There's kind of like a hollow, almost slightly pingy sound to uh, the keys, but you know, it's well within acceptable levels, so it's fine. So yeah, that's the Mountain Everest Max keyboard with the macro pad and the display pad attachment. So this is just an unboxing. I came in blind, now I see. Uh, these are just first impressions. This is just an unboxing video. A review video will be coming up uh, after this and a few trivia shorts about this. So just wait for those on my channel. If you have any questions about this keyboard, uh, let me know down there in the comment section so I can answer them in the full review or answer them in a comment. I'll do my best to answer all of these. Um, I can't answer all of them like in my laptop reviews, but you know, whenever there's a there's a worthwhile question to answer uh, 
whenever there's a worthwhile question to answer, I do my best to answer them. So yeah, catch my review of this, like this video, subscribe to my channel, and see you guys next time. Bye.